everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you for joining me here today. Really quickly, buynobaddogs.com. You guys can check out all our new merch. We got new beanies, we got new crew necks, we got new hoodies, a bunch of new stuff just in time for the holidays. Now today, we have a very tough case that was given to me from one of my other trainers. Like a, any type of herding dog, border collies, Aussies, um, healers, those types of dogs, and you try to conform them into a, a civil Labrador retriever, <laughs> sometimes it, it becomes a little counterintuitive because they're, they're going against everything they think that they should inherently do. This is a seven month old Australian Shepherd with a severe case of I don't give a sh This dog is one of the more difficult cases I've worked with this year, and he fights me and my other trainers tooth and nail. Now for a seven month old working dog, it's pretty common for them not to really want to comply to basic obedience or structure in general. Is he like food? Is he food motivated? Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay, okay. Tell him coming around your way. Okay, buddy. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. So he's, the only reason why he's doing this is because he's, he's, not, he's not used to me. He's not used to the leash. He's certainly not used to the correction collar. So, hey. Okay. Why you step He's correcting himself. All right, so I'm gonna take the food away. That's not gonna be our friend. I'm gonna give you a long line. Right. So I'm gonna just give him some space. So he's gotta learn how to shut this off. Which once he gets, we're gonna be in good shape. Just gonna take him a little bit of time. And all this is self-inflicting. He's doing it to himself, you know? Let's go, come on. Let's go, come on, come on, come on. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Come on, bub. And I know that the dog was frustrated. I know the owners were frustrated. Heck, even my other trainers were frustrated with this dog. So I had to pull a lot of different tools out of my toolbox to make this as successful as I possibly could here tonight. Hey, what's going on, Nix? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Very uh, dramatic. I, I don't think I've touched him really too much with the leash. No, he's like you said, he's doing it for himself. <clears throat> for my next trick, I'm going to just have you put this martingale on. Another collar that doesn't, it doesn't really correct, but it gives pressure. All right, round two, buddy. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the same thing just with a less pressured tool, which would be the martingale collar. So it applies pressure, but it's not as much pressure. Yay, good boy. There's a good boy. See, the, the problem is, is when he gets to me, once he gets close, I have leverage if I can get to him because if he tries to come at me and nip me, like any other <laughs> working uh, herding dog would if they were nervous, he paws it. So then I lose leverage, so I can't get to him, you know? So it's a, it's a chess game, but this is what keeps me young. Okay. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. Good boy. Good job, Nichols. Finally, we're not biting the leash. So I'm rewarding him for not hawking. For not biting the leash. Good boy. He's stressed, but it's okay. Good boy, come on. There's a good boy. 
I'm just trying to decrease the amount of reactivity we get when there's pressure applied. See, he's submitting now. Um, and why I say submission, it's not like he's like, okay, you're big and I'm not. I'm just saying like, he's like, oh, I'm not gonna fight you anymore. So that's good, that's a good sign. Good, sit. Come on. Come on. Good. Come on, let's go. Nichols, come here. So we've gotten over the uh, the big tantrum. Now he's just being stubborn. Come here. He just needs a lot of consistency on this. He needs to be handled by anybody and everybody other than you guys, you know? Good. If we had some basics in him, if I had basics with him, it would make it easier. He just doesn't want to hear anything I have to say. Because this is crash course for him. You know, you get seven months of living. He worked with Zach once. And then, you know, he's really never been told what he can and can't do and followed through with by somebody else. So he's going to fight and fight and fight tooth and nail tell you know he, and he's doing good i just i don't have any leverage i can't tell him to place or sit or down or stay or anything but all i all, all i expect from him right now from where he he's stressed but he's only stressed because he's fighting it's like a kid who's habitually crying for no reason they work themselves up for no particular reason and right now we're at a really nice point because 10 minutes before he was going he wouldn't come near me if i can close the gap from where we were to now i can close the, the gap on a lot of other things too so this is one way to start that pro i mean this is you get a dog like this and it's it's a it's it's it takes a while nope but this is one thing you can start to do is to is to just say like hey i, don't, I want you to just stay right here Come on, 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 come on. It's okay. Good. Something very simple most dogs should be able to do. So again, it helps us build a relationship and it also helps him learn something new so I can do something with him. Good. So my... My goal by the end of the session is to get him to walk on that with me. But this is the type of stuff that you guys should be doing. Finding something he's like, no way, no how, and then having him do it within a respectful reason, like not trying to drive the car or anything, but you know, getting on something like this. Of Nichols. That's his learning curve, unfortunately, is you almost have to, same thing I did earlier, is you have to just make him. And the only reason why it's stressful for him is because he's throwing this crazy fit for no reason. That's the only problem with the process, is if he was just like a normal, fearful dog and kind of like, okay, I think I'll do it, you know, with a little bit of leash pressure, it would be 
pretty ab or pretty normal. And I and the only reason why I'm I'm really pushing him more than I normally would with the dog is that's what he needs. He's never going to say, "I like you. Let's do whatever you want." Go. Yes, good boy. Nichols, come on. Good boy. Come on. Good job. Good boy. Come on. Up, up. Come on. Up, up. Good job. So right there, those like five things I just worked with him on, minimal pressure. He said, okay, I think I'll do this. Okay, I think I'll do that without a big freak out. And if we have more durations of those little increments, overall, he'll just respond. Right now, he's a, he's a wild Mustang. He's gonna fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and I just gotta break him by consistently asking him to do very basic stuff with, without saying, okay, throwing in the towel and you win. That's all I'm doing. I'm gonna keep doing this. Good man. Good man. Good man, Nichols. Good job, buddy. Come on, Nichols. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Come on. Good boy. Good job. Good boy, Nichols. Very good boy. So just light leash pressure back and forth. Good boy. Good. Come on. Good job. Come on. Good. 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 Nicely done. Good man. Good man. Good boy. Let's go up, 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 up. Nicely done. Nicely done. Oh, whoo. Good job, man. So super, super stubborn working class Aussie makes total sense why we're going to be as stubborn as a mule because that's, I mean, they're bred to, to tell people what to do, not to be told what to do. So it's really hard to get a, you know, a nicely bred working line dog. And even if he wasn't supposed to be working line, he's got those genetics that says, nope, not for me. I'd, I'd rather be on the field chasing something around. So now that we've grinded down those ideas that he has in his mind, now we're, we're not at a clean slate, but we're getting really close. So I'm gonna to continue to do this for maybe five more minutes. And then the next session when you come in, we'll probably get a quarter of the freak out and then we'll just keep progressing and progressing and building and building and building. And it's not gonna be a typical build because this isn't a typical pet. This is a very high caliber, super intelligent um, dog. So we just have to keep at it, but he's doing, he's doing right where I would want him to be for what he is. Cause he's, he's a challenging dog for sure. Let's go. Look, Zach, he's walking. Up, Let's get up there. Good job. Good job. Good. Sit. Sit. Good. Good sit. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on your little notification bell so you guys don't miss anything that I upload here on the channel. Leave a comment below, let me know what you guys think about this video and what you wanna see in the future. And don't forget, you can buy your No Bad Dog merch at our shop. The link is in the description below. Just in time for the holidays, get yourself some gear before they sell out. I'm Tom Davis and I will talk to you next time. Peace.